So I've been sent this Infrared P2 Pro uh, thermal imaging camera and I thought to start with it's just another one of those USB-C plug-in dongle type thermal imaging cameras but it turns out after a little bit of testing this infrared p2 pro is actually something a little bit different and it is kind of interesting in what they've tried to do so it makes some pretty bold claims which is one of the reasons i um, agreed to accepting it because i wanted to see if the claims really stacked up so let me just show you what's inside the box to start with it's pretty familiar with uh, to a lot of other things but you can see once you get kind of the cable bits out and it's got you you know USB-C extension cable and stuff like that but there's two pieces to it and that's what makes this infrared p2 pro a bit unique on the left that's a macro lens that I've just popped the macro lens cover off of and so although you've got what they claim is the world's smallest thermal imaging camera which uh, I kind of believe to be true from a quick search around and a quick google you've also got this magnetic macro lens which if I can do this nicely it just pops on there you can pop off the cap now you've got a macro lens for working for real close up and for little electronics and circuit boards and stuff like that and um it actually works really really well um, with and without the macro lens on and i have to say this is brilliant if you do want a thermal imaging camera that is going to work with your smartphone this is the one to go for if you want a standalone device you can check out some of my other videos but this thing is brilliant and specs wise it's got the same high resolution as the top don that i previously reviewed which is 256 by 192 pixels it also has a 25 hertz refresh rate um, and it's just really nice and compact actually let me bring into shot my the top don tc001 so you can see the size difference which is massive you can see once you've got that plugged into the bottom of your phone it makes a huge difference there is a bit of a difference in the weight but i don't think that will affect too many people it's just the kind of bulk of it and strangely enough this p2 pro it's not that much more expensive than the top don tc001 yes it is a premium price tag but you get the macro lens and you're getting a super tiny compact one let me show you it actually in operation i'll do a bit of screenshot of my phone um, screen recording um, but you'll see it works flawlessly it actually works with the top don app as well they seem to be uh, compatible but I can use the software that is designed for the infrared and I'll show you a few things that it can do but I'll also show you what it can do with the macro lens on okay so this is the app we're working with it's the p2 pro app available on the google play store for me on an android phone so if I just open this up and you can see that the app itself it's just works it's just it functions this one actually transitions properly to landscape use whereas um, when I was trying this before wow my webcam is cooking 35.7 degrees sometimes these thermal imaging cameras can be a little bit eye-opening that computer's warm as well that's been off for a while um, anyway the app itself um, it's fairly basic but it does what it needs to do you can see three different uh, points both the coldest point on screen the warmest point on screen and then the center point on the screen i can uh, set for video or for photo mode you can change the palette of it it's all you really need from a thermal imaging app for your phone and you can see my portable power station there and clearly where the inverter is running inside that bad boy let me show you some other things that you can do with one of these thermal imaging cameras check out my tumble dryer that's a heat pump tumble dryer and you can see it doesn't get as warm as a normal one would you can check for cold spots this is where i have a bit of a draft in my house you can check for any breaks in any insulation in the structure of your building If you would like to locate the dabs on your dot and dab wall and maybe you want to run some cables through, uh, infrared camera is very helpful in finding exactly where those dabs are, especially if there's a big temperature difference between inside and outside. If your kids are 
turning on your TV, you can see exactly how hot your OLED TV gets. Interesting, all the heat at the bottom of an OLED TV. I recently saw on one of the solar groups that someone identified a short uh, cable or a cable that was shorting out, I think it was one of his MC4 connectors, by using his infrared uh, camera and he could just see that that cable had a lot more resistance and it was either shorting or arcing or whatever it was and the it actually was a fire risk and he managed to capture it early so uh, good going there you can see my solar inverter is not particularly warm today it's been a very uh, gloomy cloudy day and my garage is all quite a consistent temperature if it was a bit warmer or a bit cooler then you'd be able to see a good temperature differential between any spots in your ceilings that aren't fully insulated. Again, excellent. And see these electronic devices. It's also great for hot pipes or, pipe or pipe pipes that are losing a bit of heat. And you can see where they could do with a little bit more insulation. You see there, the insulation doesn't quite extend all the way down to my hot water tank. So you can see where the hot water has been uh, losing a little bit of warmth to my cupboard and you can see all the electronics always nice and warm and that alarm system is always roasting 36 degrees hmm should it be that warm it's a question for the people in the know so you've listened to all my blah 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 about all the usual boring things that people can do with thermal imaging cameras. Now let's just open up the case to my computer and have a little look inside. Let's a quick scan of everything. Shall we maybe pop on this macro lens and have a little look at the difference? Magnetic attachment on macro lens. Wow. I'm almost touching the board now, super close. Um, the camera is approximately 15 millimeters from the board. So you can see how close you could get into interrogate electronics. But the macro lens actually does what it advertises. Unfortunately, I'm struggling to get it in because of the size of my phone. Oh, it takes a minute to focus, but that is impressive. Okay, so it works. This Infrared P2 Pro, um, it's an exceptional little camera. As you can see, it's just so much more compact than the competition, or at least the competition that I've tried thus far. Um, it's got this excellent macro lens on it. It pops on and off. It does what it advertises to do. Apparently, it's the smallest camera. If you can find anywhere that has a slightly smaller one, then let me know. It also has this clip-on magnetic lens, which is brilliant. It's got an excellent case to chuck it in, which isn't too bulky. It's just nice and slimline. The app just works i don't have any complaints and for the money yes it's slightly more than something like the top done but this is still cheaper than the entry level FLIR camera and so are you just paying for the brand name you're getting with this you're getting a smaller more compact and it doesn't feel plasticky this body feels like it's probably some sort of aluminium um, housing you're getting better resolution you're getting a better refresh rate so it's, the, it's very smooth when you're moving around and rendering it picks up hot spots it's a higher specification camera in a better form factor better packaging and it's cheaper than a FLIR camera I think it you'd be silly to buy a FLIR I think go for one of these especially if you're doing any electronics work and you need to check for <laughs> burnt out capacitors or resistors or chips or anything that I am just too ignorant to know about, this little macro lens is going to be an absolute game changer for you. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, give us a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What have I missed? Is this just absolutely a no-brainer or am I just talking absolute rubbish? Let me know that in the comments as well. Thanks. Bye.